Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So this is Mini Sewing Machines and Things Part 2. We had two more sewing machines that we didn't get to finish in Part 1. Now this is the teeny tiny yellow one that actually looked like a toy. So I'm going to upcycle it and make it a little bit more realistic and use it as a serger or a practice sewing machine for little Tracy. So I'm painting a nice coat of Hunter's Green and I'm going to add some gold and black details. So let me allow that to dry. Now dolls, do you remember this sewing machine? It's the one that my aunt gave me and I used the red table to upcycle it and add a different machine to it. Well, this is the sewing machine that came off of that little table. So I decided to brighten it up by giving it a fresh coat of paint. Now this one is solid wood, not plastic. Now this machine is slightly bigger than 12 scale and bigger than the other ones on the other tables. But again, I want it to look like maybe it's a heavy duty, more industrial type sewing machine. So I'm going to fix it up and add some details to it. So while that was drying, I went back to my little green machine. Now dolls, I did add white thread instead of red because I didn't want it to give it a Christmassy look. I also added a little nail art to some of the details to kind of bring out some of the small things that you just really wouldn't notice from a distance. A lot of times adding the little details is what really brings things to life. Never neglect the details, dolls. A tiny sewing machine like this could get lost in a dress shop or in a sewing room scene. Add all the little extra gadgets to it. Make it stand out because it's the little things that count. And although I really like the way this looks, I'm thinking I may need to add a little shine to the surface of the machine. I really don't think I like that matte finish. And dolls, when I'm doing something like this, I'm not concerned with whether it's mechanically or historically correct or accurate because these are not fine miniatures. They're fun miniatures. So now that I was done detailing the little green machine, I went back to the black one. The paint is dry. I was really excited about doing this one because it's a bigger machine, so there's plenty of room to add extras. Now I did add a little broken off piece of a straight pin to be the needle at the bottom. I quickly realized adding that little straight pin to the needle area was going to take a little bit more of my patience. So I just moved on and started to add the little nail art studs. Now, although I'm not concerned that things are mechanically accurate, I do want them to be believable. Now, I realized I needed some more pieces. I didn't want all of the pieces that I added on to look exactly the same. So I had to rummage through some more of my jewelry findings. And I realized some of the pieces I was pulling out were too big. This project needed really, really small, teeny pieces. Pieces that would at least resemble vintage sewing machine gadgets. Now you see with this machine, I'm back to my red thread on the spool because the red definitely will stand out. Now there was a little hole in the top of the machine, which was perfect for me to add the little spool of thread and stabilize it with a little glue. So now that I've added a couple of the gadgets and the spool of thread, I found exactly what I needed after rummaging through my extras. Now this little piece I found was actually a teeny tiny screw, which is actually perfect for me to wrap the thread around. Now dolls, I am using my Loctite glue to add these little findings. And to be fair, I did look at some images of vintage machines to determine where I would put my little extras. Now a project like this dolls really brings out the play in me. And as I tell you, your imagination blossoms in the midst of play. So in the midst of finding the things that I thought I needed, I found some things I thought I wanted to add. And I thought something like this would maybe look like it was a part of the design or a part of the logo on the machine. So I played around with the position of it a little bit until I decided that I had it at an angle that would fit or look the most attractive. And again, I'm using my Loctite glue because that's a metal piece. And I don't want it to come off and I don't want the glue to show. And I tried to apply the glue in the shape of the little metal piece so that when it's applied, you won't be able to see the glue. But you can see the glue anyway. <laughs> so while that messy glue job was drying, I went ahead to add the red thread to simulate that the sewing machine is actually threaded and ready to sew. Now I wrapped the red thread around the little screw piece that I put at the top of the sewing machine above where the needle would go. Now dolls, I truly do apologize for this part not being in frame. 
I was trying to hold it up as close as possible to make sure I got it in the right spots. Here it is at a better angle so you can really see what I did and where I placed all the gadgets and how I added the thread. Now I tried to do a close up here. I know it's a little bit blurry, but I glued a piece there and I wanted to wrap the little red thread around that to make it look like I threaded through to the needle. I need to practice holding my items back. I'm so nearsighted that I think everybody needs to see it close. <laughs> So dolls, as I mentioned, none of this is necessary. I just get a kick out of stuff like this. So just when I was about to add the shine to the little green sewing machine, I realized there were some more details that I had missed with my gold paint. The area was so small that I just took the tip of a toothpick and dipped it in the gold paint and just dragged it across the little carved designs in the sewing machine. And it really looked pretty. I'm really glad I noticed it before I put on the sealer. So now that those gold teeth tails are in, I used a little bit of black and dabbed on the wheel to make it look like it was a little bit worn. And then I went on to add my sealer. And dolls, when I say sealer in this instance, I'm referring to my Aileen's Craft Glaze. I normally use this when I'm making my dollhouse food from polymer clay because it adds a nice light shine that just takes away the matte effect. It just gives things a light sheen instead of a real high gloss. And since I had it out already, I went ahead and added a light coat of the craft glaze to the black machine as well. Now dolls, before I wrap this up, I needed to find bases for these sewing machines. Now I will at a later time build tables for these little machines. But in the meantime, they need to at least have a base. Now for the little green machine, this is a lid from the boxes I made from scraps. And I will leave the link in the description for that particular video. But I'm just adding some of that furniture touch-up glaze to it just to give it a little color. I'm not going to stain it or paint it where it looks really good. I just want it to look a little vintage and beat up. Now this is a small piece of MDF. I don't know why I was trying to stain it. But then I found another small piece of wood that was the perfect size. I just needed to kind of clean up the edges and sand it a little because it was the perfect size for the little black machine. So I sanded it until I evened it out and got it nice and smooth. And then I added that same little touch-up furniture glaze to it as well and allowed it to dry. Still practicing using small amounts of glue, I added some of my Gorilla Wood glue to both of the bases and added the sewing machines. So I had to make a few adjustments to the base for the black machine and clean up the oozing glue as usual. And then I felt like something else was missing to this machine, although I felt like I had added enough gadgets, buttons, and latches to almost every part of the surface of the machine. I had another idea. So I wanted to add that little metal piece that's just below where the needle goes in, right where the bobbin and those type of uh, pieces would go. And I was looking at a piece of broken earring and I found this little drawer key or drawer pull front. So I wanted the part of the earring where the hook would normally go to be right at the tip of the base and be positioned right under the needle. So I had to cut it so that it would lay right in the area. It wasn't quite laying like I thought, so I need to cut it some more. Now I'm not using regular scissors. These are electrical scissors that I'm using. So they cut through metal and wire really well. And so I had to kind of play around with it to determine where to cut it because you know I didn't want to measure. So after several failed attempts to cut it the right length, I finally got it to the length that it was supposed to be. I possibly could have saved myself quite a bit of time if I had measured, but I was happy that I didn't cut it too short and then and ruined the whole idea because I didn't have the second earring. <laughs> now, I don't know about you dolls, but I think that's a really cool vintage detail. And more than anything, I just wanted to add a little visual interest to the base of the sewing machine. I didn't want it to look too plain and basic because that makes it look primitive to me. At first I wasn't going to do it, but then I just couldn't stop. I went ahead and added the little drawer pull keyhole as well. Now I always try out my placement of things before I actually glue them and I did what I call dry fit. Try fit. 
So I went on to paint the little metal piece because it actually was more of a silver tone and I wanted it to look like the antique gold to match the other gadgets on the rest of the sewing machine. So I didn't do a really thick coat dowels. I really did a really light coat of my tester's antique gold and allowed that to dry. When it was dry, I added my Loctite super glue gel and laid the little triangle shaped piece on top of the super glue gel right under where the needle was. And then I added a little more super glue gel and added the little, the little drawer lock keyhole. I had to play with that a little bit with my tweezers to make sure I set it straight. But in the end, I was really pleased with the way it turned out. And I thought that added a really antique vintage little detail. Now, Dallas, we have one more video in this series for the sewing machines and things. So stay tuned. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, Dolls.